what's up guys CPU Morty here back with another video and when it comes to the CPU market it is pretty much common knowledge at this point or at least it should be common knowledge at this point that every CPU is not exactly created equally whether we're looking at different wafers or different parts of the wafer every single CPU is going to be ever so slightly different and even if you own the exact same model again they're going to be very slight differences between different single products with each CPU having its own little quirks and features that are going to be different from every other CPU out there. That's why you can't exactly find exact specifications for super high end overclocks on the internet because everyone's going to have a slightly different setup. Now these differences aren't exactly going to be major differences. We're not talking between 10 FPS and 100 FPS. We're talking more like 0.001 of a megahertz difference or sometimes some slight memory compatibility here and there. They're going to be very small differences but there's definitely a difference there. And whether they're big enough differences to see, for example, if you and a friend own an 8600K and one of you is able to hit 5 GHz and the other is only able to hit 4.9 GHz, there's differences like that or there may be differences in things like memory controllers, PCIe differences and little minor quirks and differences like that. Heck, there may be even a difference where you're able to hit 5 GHz and your friend's able to hit 5 GHz but one of you needs ever so slightly more voltage. Now the question has been, well, is there really a big and noticeable difference if you're just to take CPUs out of the box, slap them in a motherboard and run some games and for years that has definitely bugged me and well today we actually get to find out what if you were to take 10 15 20 50 or 100 CPUs run them exactly the same time would you see any noticeable difference and again today we get to test that out and I was lucky enough to get my hands on 10 core i5 8400 CPUs to test this question now unfortunately no these are not the case skews so overclocking will not necessarily be possible as well we can't over overclock non-K CPUs at the time of recording, so we'll just have to wait for another video to do our overclocking test, but today we still got 10 CPUs to run exactly the same test, and to see out of the box, is there going to be a difference between all the chips out there? Now today's CPUs are 6 cores and 6 threads with a max turbo speed of 4.0 GHz, now keep that 4.0 GHz in mind as that will come back to play with us in just a moment, with up to 64 GB of DDR4 RAM support and 16 PCIe lanes, these 6 cores and 6 thread CPUs are really powerful for what they are on the market and I have to say compared to my old 6 core 6 thread system these new i5s aren't too bad option. Now for testing today I also too paired up all these CPUs with the GTX 1080 Ti, 16 gigs of RAM and really the rest of the system is listed on the screen right here. Now also to note I did use these stock CPU coolers that came in the box as I wanted to keep everything the same if you were to go ahead and buy a CPU take it out slap the stock cooler on there what kind of results could you expect to have? Not to mention, I didn't want to have any sort of contaminants between tests and stuff like that, so we did keep everything nice and equal. So with that being said, let's start off with our test. And the first thing that I did want to test off was the temperatures. Temperatures are one of those things that could easily vary from CPU to CPU, and whilst we do have non-overclocking parts, it still was interesting to see the temperatures that we did get. And well, unsurprisingly, they're all very, very close. Though with that being said, what we'll now know as CPU 10 was ever so slightly higher which was interesting to see. It's about 5 degrees hotter on average on both uh, turbo boosting and also to in just general heavy load situations. And well we could put this down to speed as if we go ahead and take a look at the speed graph I did note that the actual CPU 10 was running slightly higher on single core loads. Now I did say that the reported max speed is 4 gigahertz but I did find it boosting to 4.15 gigahertz on a single core in some applications and this is where we did get our highest spikes in temperature. Now this is really nothing to worry about and whether it's just a bug in software or something like that, whether I was looking at CPU Z, hardware monitor or Windows Task Manager, all of them reported about 4.15 GHz. Again, it's not going to be the biggest and most noticeable thing, but it did give in slightly extra sort of temperature over on the temp side and slightly faster clock speeds. But as we'll notice in just a moment, this really means nothing in terms of benchmarking. Now again, do note that this was not the entire CPU jumping up to 4.15 GHz. This was a single core in a boost situation. So to be clear, when it came to multi-core tests, just like every other CPU out there, they all ran it around that 3.8 GHz marker, which means there's really no differences there when it comes to 
into multi-core load. Again, this was a single core spike, which was interesting to see. Now, whether this is just a weird off chip that has some little extra thing that's not really working right, or it's just working right, I don't really know. At the end of the day, it still was able to stack up with the rest of the stuff there. So with that being said, let's jump into our gaming test. And gaming wise, we did find very, very similar results. As we do know today, there isn't really that much of a difference when it comes to the CPU market. Bottlenecks in games aren't exactly sort of well that common, unless again, you're running super low end hardware. Our i5 today were definitely no bottleneck for that GTX 1080 Ti, and thus there was no problems. Sure again, there might've been slight differences in games, but this is more down to run to run differences in games rather than the CPUs themselves. But do note that there was ever so slight differences, but again, more on the uh, gaming side. Jumping into professional application sides, well, again, we found very similar results. Whether we're looking at After Effects, Premiere Pro, or Adobe Audition Test, all of them had the same results. Brighter 3D also too had the same results when rendering to 100 revisions. Mocha Pro tracked in the same amount of time. Cinema 4D also too rendered in the same time. And if I sound like a broken record at this point, that's probably a really good thing. As you know, when you take a CPU out of the box, you're getting roughly the same performance, in fact, the same performance as everyone else, also too pulling out their CPU out of the box. And this was really good to see very consistent sets of numbers. As we do know, there is those slight differences. When it comes to exactly the same hardware, we get relatively the same numbers. Don't get me wrong, there's definitely those small little changes here and there, but if we take a look at our graphs once again, every CPU has a win here, but also to a loss over here. So at the end of the day, it's really not that much of a difference when it comes down to the actual performance of these chips. So looking at our numbers in games and also to pro applications, it doesn't look like we're really getting a really bad chip and also to a really good chip. Intel's done a good job at keeping the, well, average, average and getting decent numbers at that. And if we go ahead and average out all the numbers across the board and then take a look at a single sample versus the average, we see it is extremely close to those sets of numbers. Now, with that being said, if we did go ahead and do some overclocking, we would definitely be going ahead and actually making these differences well a lot more apparent and we would be able to actually start to measure them in our video game situations. But again, sadly, we don't have the ability to do that as we don't have overclocking CPUs. That will definitely have to wait for another videos. All in all, is there a difference? Well, definitely there is a difference. Again, on the more micro and minute side. Whereas if you're just playing some games, doing some general tests here and there, you're really not gonna be noticing a difference between one CPU and another CPU. There's really not too much of a difference there. Again, out of the box, the stock configuration is definitely completely fine, but where we will start to notice the difference in all of our CPUs is definitely in the overclocking market. But let me know down in that comment section if you want me to test more parts in sort of batch configurations just like this. Maybe the GPU side, we might actually see a bigger sort of a change between one and another, but over on the Intel CPU side anyway, from our testings here today, it does seem that just about everything out of the box will perform within a margin of error of each other. With that being said, thanks all for watching. Again, check that description box if you want to pick up this CPU. Thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one.